Hello, my name is Keshwani. S K E S H W A N I Keshwani. We are here because we want to prepare for the GRE. We have already solved every single math problem from this book, the official guide to the revised GRE, the second edition. If you do not own this book already, purchase one immediately. You're going to need it. You must so go through all the problems in this book. If there is a problem that gives a difficulty, you will find the solutions to almost all the problems from this book from day number 251 through 400. This book contains almost all the same problems and on the same page numbers as the ones that appeared in the first edition of the revised GRE. If you are interested in watching the original solutions to the problems, you will find the original solutions from day number 1 through 250. Original solutions tend to be lengthier and in-depth. Right now, we are in the process of solving some quantitative comparison question from this book right here, the 10th edition of the old GRE. We are doing the quantitative comparison question from this, so from this book for one very simple reason, because the new books, the first edition and the second edition, unfortunately, do not contain, in my opinion, enough quantitative comparison questions for us to practice on. Quantitative comparison questions are very important. They are still in the exam. So to get some extra practice, we started doing some problems from here. We are on page number right now, 136. Let's turn to it. Page number 136. Very first problem that you see there, problem number 9. In problem number 9, we are given a rectangular box. We are given a rectangular box. And we are being asked to compare, or rather compute. We are being asked to com rather not compare, compute. No, not compute, rather. We are being asked to compare the area of this shaded region. Right here is the shaded region. The area of this shaded region. This is number 9. Area of the shaded region A, B, C, D A, B, C, D area of the shaded region versus 9. This is our column B and this is our column A. They tell us, they tell us that A to E is 3 they tell us that C E to D is 4 and they also tell us that C to D is 2. What can we do here? It's a very straightforward, simple problem. As a matter of fact, when it was given in the exam, 77% of the people, more than 3 quarters of the people who took the exam, had no trouble with it at all. They got it right. First, we have to figure out the length of this side, A to D. Finding the length of A to C is very simple because we have a 3 here, we have a 4 here. It's a 3, 4, 5 triangle. A to E is 3, E to D is 4, and therefore this side is going to be 5. It's a 3, 4, 5 triangle. And if you did not know, or if 3, 4, 5 triangle is not something that clicked in your mind, you can do it very quickly. Let's call this thing x. You can do it very quickly. x squared is going to be 3 squared plus 4 squared, which is 9 plus 16, which is 25. Therefore, x is 5. Once we have the, x, once we have the length of A to D, which is 5, the, the, the area of this shaded, shaded rectangle that they're showing here is simply 5 by 2. The area of the shaded region is just 5 by 2, which is 10. We're being asked to compare 10 versus 9. 10 versus 9, the answer is A. The answer is A. Let's go on to the next one. Number 10. Number 10. Number 10, number 10, almost half the people missed it. We are told that x squared times y is greater than 0 and x times y squared, we are told, is less than 0. And we are being asked to compare x versus y. x versus y. Now you could mess around with plugging in numbers and so forth. But that will take too long and it's not necessary here. There is a more straightforward way. Just think logically here. We are told that this is x squared times y. x squared, the squared of any quantity, whether the quantity is positive or negative, whether x happens to be positive or x happens to be negative, 
whether x is positive 3 or negative 3, when you square it, this quantity will always be positive. And we are told that x squared times y is positive. x squared times y, we are told, is more than 0. Well, if x squared times y is more than 0, then y, then y, then y must also be positive. Because positive times positive is more than 0. Y could not have been negative. Y would have to be positive because that's the, we know that x, we know that x squared has to be positive. Positive times some other quantity turns out to be positive. Since their product is positive, then this second quantity must also be positive because positive times positive is positive. Had y been negative, had y been negative, we would have had positive times negative. Positive times negative is negative, and negative is not more than zero. Similarly, here we know that y squared. It doesn't matter. So this this analysis has absolutely nothing to do. This analysis is independent. Same exact story. It doesn't matter whether, whether what y is even though by now we know that y is positive, but it doesn't matter whether what y is, whether y is positive or negative, y squared will always be positive. And we are told that this quantity x, this quantity x times some positive quantity is less than zero. But since the product of these two quantities is less than zero, since the product of these two is negative, x must be negative. So we know now x is negative and we know y is positive. Whatever y is, y has to be a positive quantity, x has to be a negative quantity, therefore the answer is b. Let's do the next one, number 11. Number 11. Number 11 is a geometry question. We are given a circle here. And we are told that the diameter is, we are told that the diameter, no, this is number 11, diameter of the circle is 10. The diameter of the circle is 10. We have line A to C here. A, B, C, and D. A, B, C, and D. And what we are asked to find is the area of the quadrilateral A, B, C, D versus versus 40. So what is the area of the quadrilateral? Well we're not interested in we're not interested in knowing what it is what is it. We are only interested in knowing whether the area of this quadrilateral is more than 40 or less than 40 or equal to 40. These are quantitative comparison. Don't turn them into computation. So let's see what we can do. Okay? Since we know the diameter is 10, A to C, A to C is 10. We can also tell from the picture that B to D, B to D, B to D is less than 10. B to D is less than 10, as we can clearly see here. If B to D is less than 10, then let's call this point, let's give this point a name. We have A, B, C, A, B, C, D, let's call it E. That implies if B, if B to D is less than 10, that implies that B to E B to E has to be less than 5. B to E has to be less than 5. I have not given you the percentile on this one, have you? Have I? It is 53%. About half the people got it right. So now we know that B to E, whatever it is, we don't know what it is, but whatever it is, has to be less than 5. This is how we write less than 5. We know that A to C is 10. We have to find the area of the quadrilateral. Let's look at, instead of looking at the area of the quadrilateral as a whole, let's look at the area of the triangle A, B, C. Because the area of the triangle ABC, whatever it is, has to be the same as the area of the triangle ACD. ACD. Once we find once we find the area of the triangle ABC, once we can figure out the area of the triangle ABC, once we have something to say about the area of the triangle ABC, the same exact thing will apply to ACD because they're exact same. 
the exact same triangles. There's a mirror mirror of each of them. Let's find out the area of the triangle ABC. What can we say about the area of the triangle ABC? Area of the triangle we know is one half base times height. One half base. Let's use this. this let's use this part as our base. Let's use this side as our base. We're looking at the triangle ABC. ABC A to C is ten. This is our base. And how do we find the height of the triangle? Well, the height of the triangle is very straightforward. We look at the highest point in the picture, and we ask ourselves how high is it from the from the base. And this will turn out to be the height. This will turn out to be the height. This right here. This is the height of the triangle, which we know is less than five. Which we know is less than five. Which means this goes into it. Which which tells us that the area. This tells us that the area of this triangle ABC is less than twenty-five. It's less than twenty-five. Now where does it get us? Where does it get us? We want to find out the area of the quadrilateral ABCD. What can we say about the area of the quadrilateral ABCD now that we know that the area of half of the quadrilateral is something less than 25? Well, if area of half the quadrilateral is less than something less than 25 and the other half is the exact identical mirror image of it, then we can safely say that the area of the whole quadrilateral, whatever it is, has got to be something less than 50. Okay, keep listening. So what we are comparing here is something less than 50 versus 40, versus 40. But how much less than 50? We do not know. Area of the quadrilateral could exactly be 40, in which case the answer would be C, or it could be 45, in which case the answer would be A, or it could be, or it could be 35, in which case the answer would be B. We do not know. All we know, essentially what we are, what we are being asked here is to compare two quantities where we are told that one quantity is something less than 40 and we are told to compare that quantity which is something less than something less than 50 rather we are being told that one quantity is something less than 50 and we are being asked to compare that quantity versus 40 but we can't compare them, we do not know simply knowing that it is less than 50 does not tell me whether it is equal to less than or more than 40 the answer to this problem is D the answer to this problem is D that's all. I'll see you tomorrow, okay? Bye now.